Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Professor Creeley. Uh, good afternoon, colleagues. Uh, I must uh, first uh, start by thanking uh, Professor Kua for inviting me to participate in this forum. Actually, Bob Kua and myself know each other for quite a long time. And uh, I was also a, I was holding a joint appointment at the Department of Psychiatry, and it was good value because I get to know how the psychiatrists think. You see, um, okay. The brief this afternoon is to talk about primary care doctors. What do we need to know about psychiatry? And I couldn't resist the uh, I couldn't resist the uh, temptation to show you this uh, conversation between uh, Alice and the Cheshire Cat. In this uh, Alice in Wonderland. Huh? And of course, uh, she asked the cat which way to go, and the cat replied to say, it depends a great deal where you want to go. Uh, add to that, uh, who you talk to too, is also important. So uh, this afternoon, I'll share with you what we in Singapore uh, have been talking about and thinking about, and uh, leave you in the audience to take what is uh, relevant to you when you go back to your own countries. Well, su suffice to say, well, PCD, primary care doctors, is synonymous with general practitioners, is synonymous with uh, family physicians. Uh, I think we take it that way. Okay, um, we are asked to do right sighting, yeah? and that is uh, it's a word that you can't find in the dictionary. Yeah? And it essentially is to receive stable patients from the hospital because the hospital is joke full. Well, it is also a setting where today we have the WHO positive mental health definition, which I think is very useful. Indeed, each of us must know it very well. And uh, we also have the Singapore mental health blueprint, uh, which is also an interesting document uh, that has been uh, sort of uh, stimulated by the uh, permanent secretary of uh, Ministry of Health. And therefore, I put below in red. So. Uh, Primary care doctors, you might as well take up the challenge wherever you are. And so indeed, what is there we need to do? And uh, it seems to me there are five things to do. Huh? And uh, I think five is a good number. Beyond that, it's hard to remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the first thing, of course, is that psychiatry is an extension of biomedicine. I think it's a very important statement to make. Secondly, psychiatry is more than just drugs. Huh? I think many of us get caught in the idea that it's just drugs. It's more than drugs. And thirdly, as I mentioned, the WHO's uh, positive mental health. And fourthly, the uh, Singapore Mental Health Education Blueprint. And of course, five is the hardcore uh, psychiatry that we need to know in order to connect up between hospital and community. Now, if you look at these five, actually the first four is what I call attitudinal. Uh, it's the concepts, attitudes, and you've got to buy into the concept. Otherwise, number five is meaningless. Uh. So uh, that's the thing. So let me just elaborate on each of them quickly. Okay, extension of biomedicine. Uh, uh, I want to highlight you to the things you read. Uh, that at the end of the day, each of us who is a non-psychiatrist got to be confident that we use psychiatry to solve biomedicine problems. I think we are able to go ahead back with that thinking. We are all right. Uh, and so, uh, of course, uh, the trouble as I mentioned earlier in the morning. Psychiatry is regarded as a mysterious discipline. It's kind of don't know what the, what the strings are doing. It's also thought to be somewhat unscientific and indeed uh, one of our psychiatrists alluded to that in an uh, editorial in the Adults of Academy of Medicine. Uh. Therefore, we need to bring this idea back to everybody to, hey, look, let's look at psychiatry as an extension of biomedicine. The mind is sort of part of the body. The second point of the big, of course, uh, goes beyond this mysterious discipline. Uh, mysterious discipline, mysterious pharmacopoeia, they'll go hand in hand for a long, long time. And uh, in Singapore, it was some 20 years ago that Ministry of Health said everybody must label their drugs. Uh, and the psychiatrists made out a big fuss. Uh, so, well, we, uh, we now know what uh, the strings have ordered. <laughs> which is a good thing. Eh? Suffice to say, psychiatric drugs are actually full of side effects. And that is one reason that uh, we need to understand psychiatry beyond the drugs. Eh? And suddenly I had the opportunity to look after a old professor uh, who has um, depression and agitation. So he was put on sertraline. And because he's hypertensive, they put your etanol on as well. And guess what happened? He had postural hypertension. You're making a lot of noise to say that people have given him poison. Um, so there you are. You need to know the side effects of psychiatric drugs. Eh? 
and there's this psychotherapy, which I think is very important. Uh, that uh, indeed, psychotherapy is uh, often forgotten. Uh, uh, we pay a lot of attention to drugs, but really, in some instances, indeed, it is the mainstream. Uh, uh, if you look at panic attacks, look at uh, chronic insomnia, you, you don't make use of drugs. Uh, uh, you actually try to get them out of uh, things by looking at cognitive therapy, sleep hygiene and whatnot. And even in depression, uh, often you can treat them, particularly the early and the mild ones, you can treat them with psychotherapy. I mean, after all, it's depression. It's just feeling unhappy about things. Uh, uh. Okay, so that is the second point I have to make. The third point I have to make is this uh, positive mental health definition. And again, I want to uh, sort of uh, draw your attention to the part in red that the end in mind is for every person to behave according to the WHO definition. Yeah? And certainly the primary care doctors can help everybody to achieve this. It's, uh, if you look at the three pointers, uh, it's actually cognitive behavioral therapy through and through. La, huh? Normal stresses of life. Okay, Why are we depressed? Why are we stressed up? Because often it's because we have low esteem ourselves. Huh? So poor esteem, helplessness, hopelessness, these are the three negative automatic thoughts that assail us. See? So we need to get rid of that, get rid of that toxic thing and replace that with a more positive psychology so that we're able to work productively and able to make a contribution. It's only when we feel that we have a value that we begin to contribute to other people. So you actually know the, all the psychotherapy drugs. Uh. Okay, the next thing is quite Singaporean. Uh. The mental health education program is part of the mental health blueprint. And there are actually two pointers there. The first point is the WHO's positive mental health definition. Uh, is stated again, uh, well-being, self-esteem, resilience. Uh. The second point is this idea of awareness uh, of uh, mental illnesses so that early detection can take place, early treatment can take place, and also the, to highlight the avenues of help. Uh, and this is something that the primary care doctor can do. And indeed, all of us need to do, uh, including the man in the street. I think we all should be on the same page, you see. So I thought this is something that is very useful. And uh, if you want to find out more, the Singapore Health Promotion Board has lots of stuff on there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so with all that attitudinal concepts and things, let's get on to the hardcore. So as a hardcore, what kind of stuff does the family doctor need to know? Well, I've got four slides here. And I divided it into A, B, and C, uh, so easier to understand. This slide is my attempt to paint a syllabus, methodology, as well as assessment of the primary care doctor in terms of psychiatry. If you look at teaching, actually, it's a three piece sandwich. I was told by one Taiwanese doctor you need a syllabus, you need a teaching method, you need a method assessment, could be formative or summative. Eh? Okay, so if you look at this thing, the syllabus that I thought uh, would be useful, and this actually came as a result of my interaction with psychiatrists, including uh, Prof. Deva. I think we, he, uh, unknown to him, I actually got some ideas from him too. And essentially, I framed the psychiatry that is of relevance to the family doctor in four units of study. Yeah? Um, the first unit, of course, is look at assessment, anxiety disorders, and stress, and uh, this uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, this, of course, is the biggest, uh, biggest and most treatable part of things. Uh. The second lesson is on things that we see a lot in general practice. Uh, personality disorders, abnormal illness behavior. Not quite there, but not quite bad, this kind of thing. Uh. Um, we see a lot of that. Uh, I learned how to cope with these people. And third, uh, the third unit, of course, is the hardcore psychosis. Uh, uh, I have put well, psychiatry and OH, not exactly psychosis, but they have dementia and things that can be troublesome too. Eh? So how do we deal with the long-term problems? And fourthly, the mood disorders or depression, eh, that we need suicide if it gets a bit too severe, and grief, and addiction. Eh? Park it all under mood disorders, eh? but that's not the only way to align things, eh, as you'll see in a moment. So how do we teach our family doctors uh, if you look below, this is a border version of Bloom's taxonomy. Uh. Uh, Bloom's taxonomy is more than six things. Uh. The new version is three things. Uh. So knowledge, uh, uh, in the old version, is actually knowledge, 
and comprehension uh, but it's a new version of storage so what we do we give the, the trainees a bunch of notes to go and read I think doctors are smart people uh, nurses too let them go and read uh, and then uh, after that the second part is important application uh, and problem solving uh. problem solving in the old Bloom taxonomy is analysis, synthesis and evaluation uh. so how do we do that well we get people back and that's very important get them back to be face to face with the resource persons uh, and of course in this particular discipline the resource person will be the psychiatrist so we actually coax our psychiatrist to be resource person and we give them a great kind of problem uh. see in general practice we don't see very sharp things uh, a lot of undifferentiated stuff undifferentiated stuff um, this uh, 63 year old lady complains of being very frightened uh. that's all that we give okay then you discuss what the differential diagnosis, what history will you take, what examination if necessary, because you need to look for physical illnesses too, uh, for you know it be toxic, see, and then uh, what kind of management, short term, long term. So that's how we frame the teaching uh, for our family doctors, and it's quite useful. And I must share with you one revelation. Uh. In the good old days, when I first started the program, I asked the specialists to come in give lectures. Of course, specialists like to give lectures. Uh, they just talk and talk. And then I saw many heads begin nodding and nodding. And what's worse, in many of lessons, they just don't come. You know, they sigh and they run away. When I meet them, then they look very shippies. Uh, but they cannot say that the course director <laughs> is here looking at them. So I said, no, there's something wrong. Uh, so I think case study is probably the best way to teach, the best way to engage people. Novice or expert, you got things to share on the same page. Okay, so let me then uh, move on to the uh, next thing. The Institute of uh, Mental Health have got this graduate diploma in psychological medicine uh, as the second postgraduate step. And this is what I call the finishing school uh, for the family doctors. Uh, in uh, England, they call it the gypsies, uh, GPs with special interests. Uh, mm -hmm the bottom gypsies. Huh? So my my thinking is that uh, you start with a good undergraduate program where you teach the psychiatry assessment, some exposure to how uh, problem solving takes place, the thinking that goes through the psychiatrist. And that's about all you want to teach an undergraduate. Then the postgraduate where you expose to all the family doctors the the uh, uh, 12, 13 things that I highlighted in the slides. Huh? And then uh, for people who are interested, then there's a graduate diploma in family medicine. If you look at this uh, program, they got six 10-hour modules. Uh, so psychiatry, psychosis, the park, mood, anxiety, and grief together. Uh, addiction and personality disorders together. And then uh, child and adolescent psychiatry, which in the family medicine course is not there. because we park it under pediatrics, you see. And then psychogeriatrics. So there you are. Uh, there's one more thing that I thought very important to share with you, and that is this: uh, um, how do you tie everything together? And this man uh, or lady, I don't know, uh, Blasky and others, in this paper, in Australian Psychiatry, is a wonderful paper. Huh? You must really go and get and read it because it really solves the tie-up between the psychiatrists and the GPs. And there are three things to remember. I mean, there are a lot of words. Obviously, it has got a lot of things to tell us. The first thing is to understand the GP context. Uh. The GP is a chap that deals with undifferentiated symptoms. He deals with physical as well as psychological symptoms. And often, they come together. And he hasn't got much time. Uh. So you don't give him lots of stuff that is meaningless. Uh. Tell him what is the key points and how to get on with things. But don't make him be a fool. Uh. Don't give him a checklist and, okay, got this and this equals that. I think he's got a brain also. Uh. So it's very important to understand the GP. Secondly is to provide the critical support. Uh. So cases that comes to him, he must be able to call back if he has a problem. I think that is often forgotten. The psychiatrist must be there to support him. And to support him means also to give him enough discharge information. And third, of course, is this effective education. How do you teach the GP? What GP wants is to have some notes that they can refer to that is a lifesaver, a survival guide. That's very useful. And you can park it on the website 
He can download it anytime he wants. That's the best. Huh? So, ladies and gentlemen, this is what I think would be a practical program. And let me just uh, uh, finish up with this take-home message. I've got two here. The syllabus has got five things to address. This stigmatization of psychiatry. Make sure that psychotherapy is included. Uh, make sure that we know why WHO is positive, better health definition. Make sure that we understand the better health blueprint. Yeah? And lastly, know enough about knowledge and skills to be in the hospital community team. And the second point is this progression. Uh, undergraduate, good foundation. Uh, graduate diploma in family medicine for everybody. And for people are interested, there's a graduate diploma in psychological medicine. There you are there. Thank you very much. Could we please have uh, one question for Prof Go? Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you very much for a very clear uh, presentation. My question is sort of slightly silly in a way because the regulatory definition talks about mental health. Yes. And yet we as clinicians that are dealing with mental illness are really trying to map those two on mm. each other. And you know, under those circumstances, what do you think? Well, thank you, Prof. Uh, certainly, um, health and disease must be looked as a uh, continuum. Uh, so if, uh, we sort of, uh, start off with the disease end, we hopefully push people towards the left, towards the healthy end. So if you try to bury the two, it's actually um, both uh, prevention, uh, well, promotion, prevention, and disease. And you work towards that kind of spectrum, try to move people towards the left. So I think the psychiatrist it's very important to show us the disease. Uh, I think they are actually experts at disease. The primary care people has a more upstream kind of role that uh, we have to prevent people from getting into trouble and also promote positive mental health. So I don't see it to be a conflict. I see it as part of continuum. I also suspect that psychiatrists, if they interact with the doctors, primary care doctors enough, they also begin to think along the preventive and promotive book as well, which I think is good. So it is not in conflict. I think we are together. Yeah. Thank you very much, Prof. Yes, thank you. Yeah.